Um, good afternoon. Thank you all for coming. Uh, I'm uh, Michael Green, uh, Senior Vice President for Asia and Japan Chair here at CSIS and a professor at Georgetown. Um, and I'm delighted to introduce our speaker today. Um, let me first um, uh, mention to you all um, that uh, at CSIS we um, uh, open our events by um, explaining that should there be an incident, um, your full cooperation is needed, you'll exit through uh, the front, and the safe meeting place is St. Matthew's Cathedral um, just around the corner or National Geographic. Um, and let me also say how excited I am to um, welcome to CSIS uh, the day before uh, our Cherry Blossom Festival, um, the uh, governor of Tokyo um, and my former sensei at Tokyo University. Um, uh, Yoichi Masazoi has been the governor of Tokyo since uh, February 2014. Um, he was a, an academic, studied at um, the University of Paris and in Geneva. Um, and taught at Tokyo University when I was a student there. We all looked up to him as a kind of god <laughs> in the university. Um, Masazoi Sensei, and I'll always have to say Sensei, um, then uh, founded the Masazoi Institute of Political Economy, um, a think tank uh, between 1989 and 2007. I had the great um, uh, pleasure of um, doing a variety of um, uh, academic and other activities with Governor uh, Masazoi. <clears throat> we were together in 1990 on a TV show called Asa Made Nama Terebi, uh, which is a popular TV show where um, the panel stays up from 12.30 uh, a.m. until 6 a.m. <laughs> debating. And I was a student at Todai, and um, it was the, um, it was 1990, so it was the anniversary of the U.S.-Japan Security Treaty. And um, I was the only American, everyone else on the panel was Japanese, so the leftists all attacked me. <laughs> um, and I wasn't even born yet in 1960, so the security treaty wasn't my fault. But Masasoi Sensei rescued me again and again. Later we played a scenario game together at MIT where he uh, was the prime minister and I played the defense minister. Um, uh, so we have, I have very fond memories of um, Masasoi Sensei as an academic and a policy expert. But of course now um, he serves as Tokyo's governor um, after um, uh, two terms in the House of Counselors um, and as Minister of Health, Label, and, Waf and Welfare. Um, Tokyo, of course, is preparing for the 2020 Olympic and Paralympic Games. Um, and Governor Masazoi is going to share with us today his vision and plans to meet the many challenges and opportunities uh, faced by major cities like Tokyo. He's been to New York, um, Tokyo's sister city and also discussing new ideas like a hydrogen society, addressing climate change, creating a more competitive business environment, and internationalizing um, cities like Tokyo. So we'll, um, uh, we'll welcome him to the stage, and then uh, we'll have a brief uh, dialogue and then open it to your questions. But first, please join me in welcoming our very distinguished speaker, Governor Masazoe. Uh, thank you very much, Mike. Uh, thank you very much for inviting me to speak at your esteemed gathering today. I'm very happy to be here in beautiful Washington and at this time of year because there is something that your city has in abundance that is very special to me. Coming to Washington, I was exciting, expecting to see your beautiful cherry blossoms. But no one told me that the season had already finished two weeks ago. Uh, the cherry blossom trees in Washington, as you know, date back to 1912, uh, when then Tokyo mayor, Yukio Ozaki, donated some 3,000 trees to the United States upon the request of the first lady, Neville Taft, and were later planted at the side of Potomac River. These cherry flowers have continued to bloom every year for over a century, delighting the great capital of the United States. And as governor of Tokyo, I cannot be more pleased with that. Uh, three years later, in 1915, we received 60 ducat flowers from the United States in return. 
In Japan, ducked floors became the symbol of reciprocation or return the favor after this. Last year, we celebrated the 100th year of anniversary of the flower donation by holding an event attended by U.S. Ambassador to Japan, my friend, Caroline Kennedy. Uh, what I have in my hand right now is a set of postage stamps featuring cherry blossoms and duck trees. Uh, the English phrase is gifts of friendship. It's clearly spelled out on them. Uh, the stamps share a common design uh, and were issued in both countries last year. Uh, you can see on the screen also. I truly really hope that uh, friendship between the United States and Japan initiated by the exchange of these beautiful plants will last forever and ever. Of course, there have been some extreme difficult times since then. Yet, even though the flowers are delicate and short-lived, the cherry trees themselves remain standing as strong as ever, with their roots running deep into the earth and with the beautiful flowers that they produce every year, the cherry blossoms trees in Washington truly are a symbol of the lasting friendship between the United States and Japan. These relations prove to be stronger than ever when Japan's Tohoku region was struck by the devastating earthquake and the tsunami in March 2011. Five years on, while the effects of this disaster are still being felt, both physically and emotionally, through the unity of Japanese people and tremendous support from people all over the world, and most notably from the United States or its initiatives, such as Operation Tomodachi, that has slowly yet steadily returned to normal ac across the region. Tokyo Metropolitan Government is working closely with prefectural governments in the Tohoku region to support local business and launch a campaign to attract visitors back to the region, which is blessed with abundance of natural beauty and historical heritage. I'd like to take this opportunity to thank you for all the supports that you have provided to Japan and in particular to the people of Tohoku. I'm very grateful to CSIS who, through the leadership of CEO John Henry and Senior Vice President for Asia and Japan, my old friend Michael Green, uh, for many years have been holding Japan-related forums and the research events which have contributed significantly to the prosperous relationship between our two countries. As Mike said, when I was Prime Minister of Japan. He was uh, Foreign Minister of Japan on one of TV shows. Okay, I'm honored to have the opportunity today to speak in front of an organization as influential as CSIS. I, as a, a Tokyo governor, am very eager to contribute to the advancement of two nations that share the principle of freedom and democracy as many wise people from both our countries have done for decades. We are now in a time where leading cities around the world, such as Tokyo and Washington, are faced with common challenges, none of which is bigger than the issues of sustainability. I discussed uh, with many, many uh, business leaders in New York before coming in Washington, D.C., uh, with the uh, all challenges that big cities are facing with. Today, I'd like to tell you about some of the initiatives that we are implementing as a city to tackle three specific areas of sustainability. One, our economy. Two, environment. Three, our society. <clears throat> in order for a country to prosper, while also contributing to the development of the global economy and the society, it is vital for the capital city of that country to continue to evolve. Like Washington, 
Tokyo is a political center of Japan, but it is also its economic and the financial heart, and for us to sustain the important role we play in global society, building a sustainable economy is crucial. Currently, there are over 3,000 foreign companies in Japan, and nearly 30% of those are from the United States. With 70% of all foreign business being located in Tokyo, I truly believe that Tokyo is a place worthy of investment for global companies. I'd like to thank those of you in attendance today who already have our operations in Tokyo, and for those who are considering investing in our city. There has never been a better time than right now. Tokyo provides a consistently strong economic environment and an impressively large market in which it is easy to do business. We are also setting up various public-private partners funds and openly inviting foreign companies into the market. Thanks to these factors, together with an improved inbound investment strategy and 10-year plan to ensure that Tokyo remains one of the world's leading economic and financial centers. Tokyo is ranked very high among cities in Asia Pacific, according to various trusted analytic bodies. For example, Tokyo was judged the number one one mega city in Asia Pacific for both economic potential and connectivity, and the number two city overall in the most recent Financial Times, FDI Asia Pacific Cities of the Future Rankings. Our number one city on the overall ranking is uh, Singapore. Uh, Tokyo also backed down, downward global economic trends to attract a peak number of foreign direct investment projects. Tokyo accounts for 20% of Japan's national GDP and with a GDP greater than that of its nearest rivals, Hong Kong and Singapore. Uh, Tokyo is aiming to regain its title as Asia's leading financial center. As you know, the, uh, our uh, fiscal year starts 1st of April. I just passed the, uh, the budget uh, at the city assembly. You know, the total amount uh, budget is 14 billion US dollars. That is as big as the national budget of Sweden. Uh, to achieve this, the city is already putting processes in place to try and attract more international financial forums to Tokyo. And plus, plans are underway for, na for an event this year. Maybe in December, I'd like to invite uh, uh, Nobel Prize winner, an economist, uh, and the government officials and the CEO companies from all over the world to have a special symposium in Tokyo in December. And in, other, in addition, the Tokyo Metropolitan University has recently launched new finance courses for its prestigious business school. We are expecting that this will make it easier for foreign business to hire strong local talent when setting up in Tokyo. Also, in collaboration with the Financial Services Agency, we are planning to set up a financial concierge service which explains complicated Japanese financial laws and regulations, and also acts as an intermediary between the Financial Services Agency and the foreign enterprises seeking to set up offices in Tokyo. Um, Yesterday, I have the honor uh, to ring an uh, opening bell at New York Stock Exchange. Uh, there are a number of sectors in Tokyo that we believe offer a lot of promise for international companies, and we are actively inviting foreign business to invest in Japan. In particular, we see a lot of opportunity for sectors collaborating with technology. Prime example of this includes the globally emerging fields of fintech and medtech. Med 
In Tokyo now, we have successfully managed to invite fintech companies, such as a US-based company that has highest circulation of virtual currency with a high degree of blockchain technology, and a UK-based company that has been introducing highly efficient IT payment system throughout Europe. Our goal is to combine foreign developed software with Japanese technologies and vice versa to create all new services. Our technology sector continues to be incredibly strong with American companies providing a significant presence. And we are aiming for Tokyo and its surrounding regions to become a global life science hub by designating a strategic zone dedicate, dedicated to developing products and services that can change the future. In support of other industries, the, global, the goal of the Tokyo Metropolitan Government is to make the city a global tourism superpower. To assist this effort, we have developed a new branding strategy that not, not only appeals to businesses and visions from overseas, but also accurately reflects the diverse people, cultures, ideas, and opportunities that Tokyo provides. The result was the slogan, End Tokyo, which was chosen for its simplicity, catchiness, and versatility. Versatility. We launched the End Tokyo project last year as part of our of drive to de develop travel and tourism as major industries in Tokyo. Backed by both uh, the private and public sectors, it seems to be working very well so far. The concept for this slogan is to connect different things with Tokyo by adding words or phrase in front of and Tokyo. Many businesses and organizations are currently using uh, this slogan for promotion as well as for creating merchandise. Uh, I would be very happy if your business and organization also used the end slogan. Mike, we can put CSS and Tokyo, or Mike and Tokyo. My daughter's name is Karen, and she's using Karen and Tokyo. And if you like or sushi, sushi and to Tokyo. And you don't pay any credit to me, it's free. We are currently seeing an unprecedented growth in tourism, or it's close to 20 million tourists visiting Japan last year, putting us well on track to achieve our goal of 40 million foreign visitors in the year 2020, and 60 million by the year 2030. Are we on to ensure that Tokyo is more than merely the point of entry or exit for foreign visitors in Japan, it is an exciting and important travel experience in its own right. This strong tourism growth is not only creating opportunities for foreign companies in the travel sector, but it, uh, in detail and accommodation too. Uh, we are currently implementing a number of initiatives designed to make it easier than ever for foreign companies to set up operations in Tokyo. This includes the creation of one-stop business establishment center, which unifies the procedures required for companies to establish their operations in the Tokyo market, as well as system, system to simplify paperwork and expedite immigration processes for nationals scheduled to work for companies that are approved by the Tokyo Metropolitan Government. Prime Minister Abe and myself uh, last year inaugurated this one-stop service center uh, because uh, in Singapore it takes uh, only one week to set up a new company. But uh, in Japan, in Tokyo, it takes one month too long. So the, with this uh, one-stop uh, center, you can have just, uh, you know, you can have a company in one week or 10 days. And uh, as, far, as far as Tokyo government is concerned, you can write down every paper just on the English, no need to translation into 
Japanese. We are also placing an emphasis on English language education uh, for Japanese citizens to make it easier for non-Japanese companies to do business in Tokyo. And we are implementing initiatives such as the creation of English villages, which are language education facilities aimed at improving students' communication abilities in an all English environment. These new initiatives, along with many others, will make Tokyo an even more accessible destination in which businesses and their executives can operate, enjoy living with their families, and thrive. Another draw card to attract people to Tokyo is its food, as you know. Uh, Japanese cuisine was added to the World Heritage List in 2013 and has held a global title for eight straight years as a city with the most Michelin-starred restaurant. Do you know how many three-star Michelin restaurants are there in Tokyo? Thirteen. How about Paris? Only nine. <laughs> we are winner. It can be argued that Tokyo is one of the world's premier gourmet capitals. And of course, how could I forget one of the most wonderful things about Tokyo that attract business and visitors alike? It's people. Their welcoming spirit, courtesy, gentleness, and honesty are legendary. And these qualities enrich the experiences for those who live, work, and visit Tokyo in a way that's uh, very real yet hard to quantify. Now, the second problem, environment. For cities focused on sustainability, building environmental sustainability is vital. One of the biggest issues facing large cities around the world is the fight against global warming and the pressure to invest in renewable energy sources. For years now, Tokyo has been leading the way in the fight against global warming, and we are taking more steps to make Tokyo a smart energy city. That means moving forward with our pioneering cap and trade program, which has put into effect already in 2010 to help large corporations reduce green gas, greenhouse gas emissions. And we have just raised the bar for the city by committing to increasing the percentage of energy we consume from renewable resources to 30% by 2030. The target presents a significantly deeper commitment than our previous goal. However, the city can't make all of these changes alone. So we are launching a number of public-private investment funds to show our commitment to policies driven by public-private partnership. These funds exemplify how Tokyo is trying new ways to encourage private capital investment from home and abroad uh, in a bid to combat global warming through financial investment. Although Tokyo has only invested about $37 million, this set the stage for the growth of six energy funds worth over $350 million. Next, or is the significant impact that our motorways have on the environment, we are developing a broader vision to leverage hydrogen fuel cell technology to eliminate CO2 emissions and create a new hydrogen-based society. The Tokyo Metropolitan Government has set aside over $350 million to promote the adoption of hydrogen-powered cars and, importantly, the fueling station necessary to power them. By 2030, we, aiming to have, uh, we aim to have a network of 150 fueling stations with 200,000 fuel cell vehicles in operation. As part of the public education program to support this build-out, we established a fueling station in March 
this year and an additional showroom that will give citizens a glimpse of uh, the future will open this July. Like many cities around the world, we are placing a priority on demotorizing and turning Tokyo into a congestion-free city. We are already implementing initiatives such as increasing the number of pedestrian zones, expanding bicycle lanes, and introducing bike-sharing programs. In addition, a new bus rapid transit or BRT service, this one, will be launched in the Bay Area in 2019, further enhancing public transportation. BRT will be equipped with advanced operation support technology, not seen anywhere else in the world. Buses will be highly safe with universal design qualities, including smooth acceleration and deceleration to prevent falling inside vehicles, and they will stop next to station platforms without leaving a gap. Moving forward, public transportation will continue to incorporate new technology. Now, something that may surprise you is uh, Tokyo is a city dressed with 107 waterways. In fact, Tokyo Bay and the four major rivers that run through Tokyo had been integral parts of its fabric for hundreds of years. I have long championed Tokyo's opportunity to appeal to people all around the world by embracing its heritage as a city of water. I strongly believe that investing more in our waterfront areas can help to shape the future of Tokyo, such as further utilizing waterways for global events such as marathons, cultural events, riverside fireworks, uh, displays, and festivals. This is also an exciting time for Tokyo's waterfront areas because the world-famous Tsukiji Fish Market will be unveiled in its new location of Toyosu in this November, coming November. We are also looking to upgrade our port uh, infrastructures so as to be able to accommodate an increase in the number of larger cruise ships, in particular the world's largest 220,000 ton models that are eager to stop in Tokyo. Uh, this part, is, uh, you know, this is the new bar market of Toyosu uh, coming from Tsukiji, uh, but uh, other parts of this uh, area, you can have the uh, new uh, port to welcome the largest, world's largest uh, uh, cruise ships. Uh, all, the, all these uh, things will revitalize a critical asset of our, our city and enable the future long-term planning of Tokyo. Now, third problem about the uh, society. Uh, you know, lastly, I'd like to talk about the ideas we are implementing for building a sustainable society which is vital for any city striving to become a premier global metropolis and how we are achieving, achieving our goal of becoming the safest, most livable city in the world. I was very happy when I learned that uh, Monocle magazine, as in a British magazine, declared Tokyo the mo world's most livable city in the last year's quality of life survey. However, an area that we are heavily focusing on is, in, is creating a healthy work-life uh, balance for our citizens. Uh, just to look at this listing. Uh, number one is Tokyo. Where is Washington, D.C.? Where is New York? I can't find out, but uh, I don't like to compete. Uh, you, you know, but uh, anyway, uh, that's not me. That's British magazine for surveys. Anyway, we are encouraging all companies to embrace a culture where employees have time for their own private lives and time to spend with their loved ones. On the top of cultivating new opportunities for women, we are implementing measures to diversify our workforce beyond gender alone, regardless of gender, age, physical ability, working status, ethnicity, and religious beliefs, 
the workplace is where everyone should be offered opportunity, security, and safety. In Tokyo, the issue of safety extends beyond just the workplace. Due to our ge geographical location, as you know better, Japan is prone to experiencing extreme natural phenomena, including earthquakes and typhoons on a regular basis. Uh, may, you, you may have heard that Kumamoto Prefecture, about 800 miles south of Tokyo, was struck by a large earthquake yesterday. Uh, this is an example of what we always need to be prepared for. And my thoughts uh, with the people of Kumamoto. Um, core elements of uh, Tokyo's infrastructure include earthquake resilient, resistant buildings, roads and service facilities, as well as revetment to protect against storm and tsunami flooding. These investments are fundamental to ensuring that the people of Tokyo are as safe as possible in the event of a natural disaster. We conduct regular evacuation drills and emphasize the importance of stockpiling food supplies in case of an emergency. You know, the uh, big merit of uh, uh, hydrogen car uh, fuel cell, you know, is if you have one car of this time, in case of blackout, for example, one small car, car can provide all the electricity that your house uh, needs. And we have a bus with this system. One bus can provide full electricity that one school needs. So this is very good tools to prepare a kind of natural disaster. In addition, in order to further educate our citizens about necessary safety measures, we recently produced this one and uh, distributed a free disaster preparedness handbag to every household in the city with English, Chinese, Korean versions available online. Uh, I distributed seven million copies to every household and the the uh, residents living outside Tokyo direct to buy. So you can buy with a cost of just one dollar. Uh, furthermore, in a bit to ensure that Tokyo's, Tokyo is prepared for any possible terrorist attacks, it is vital to ensure that there is strong collaboration between the public and the private sectors. We have the attacks in Paris and Bruxelles. You know, so we, we have now established the Anti-Terrorism Partnership Tokyo. This is our program. This initiative is designed to prevent any potential threat to our society by such means as linking video cameras owned by private transportation companies with Tokyo Metropolitan Police Department. We are also introducing a 3D mapping system that is able to identify and analyze buildings and landmarks in Tokyo that may be at risk of terrorist attacks. We also have dedicated specialist teams in place to protect against cyber security threats. It is very difficult to prevent cyber security, but we are watching every minute. In addition, there is an increase in the amount of international dignitaries visiting Tokyo. We are having the Iseshima Summit this year. Uh, you know, we, done a, uh, we, we are constructing a new training and response facility for the Tokyo International uh, Airport uh, terrorist, Terrorism Response Unit near Haneda Airport, uh, you know, the gateway to the center of Tokyo. These initiatives, together with maintaining one of the lowest crime rates in the world, resulted in the economic, Economist Intelligence Unit declaring Tokyo as the world's uh, safest city in the last uh, year's safety cities index. Uh, you can see again the, the list uh, 
Now, New York is number 10, uh, where the top. Uh, again, the British you know, index. Moving on, I must not forget to talk about one of the most exciting opportunities that is coming to our city. As you know, that is, of course, 2020 Tokyo Olympic and the Paralympic Games. Uh, this global event will provide us with the chance to expand Tokyo's infrastructure and make it more accessible to local residents and foreign visitors alike. Our vision is to create a barrier-free games, which means not only making significant investment in public transport and infrastructure, but also breaking down language barriers to enable non-Japanese visitors and residents to fully enjoy all that Tokyo has to offer. We are aiming to implement initiatives such as multi-language public signage, volunteer guide programs, and translation applications that support 29 different languages. Uh, for example, we have already installed digital signage with a new uh, interactive screen on the second floor of my Tokyo Metropolitan Government House. And we we we'll also work to ensure that Tokyo is fully accessible for the visitors with physical disabilities by investing further in barrier-free facilities throughout the city. Another of our plans is to repurpose the Olympic and Paralympic venues to create more recreational spaces in the city for the cultural events and the youth education so that people of all ages can enjoy them for the decades to come. For example, the canoe slalom course will be linked to a neighboring public park to make a recreation area with rafting and other exciting water sports right in the heart of Tokyo. We are very, very excited about the opportunities that hosting the Olympic and the Paralympic Games will bring and for the positive impact that they will have on Tokyo society well beyond 2020. I want to thank you again for taking the time today to listen to the initi initiatives that we are implement implementing to combat some of the sustainability challenges that Tokyo is facing. And that I'm sure many Major U.S. cities like Washington, D.C. are dealing with two. Before closing, I'd like to just touch upon an important development that uh, we are experiencing in the international economic front. In February uh, this year, the Trans-Pacific Partnership, TPP Trade Agreement, which includes the U.S., Japan, and 10 other countries, was signed with ratification procedures to start gaining speed in each country. With TPP countries accounting for 40% of, of the world's GDP and be, being made up of an, uh, approx approximately 8 million people, in order for Tokyo to continue to survive as an economic powerhouse, I believe that we need to become even more global, and we will be aiming to increase our international competitiveness as we head towards the 2020 Tokyo Olympic and Paralympic Games. For more than a half century, the U.S.-Japan bilateral relationship has been driven by strong economic, finance, trade, and investment ties. TPP offers as a chance to solidify for the decades ahead new business relations between Tokyo and major business and financial markets in the United States and across the Pacific Basin. Yesterday, I met with Mayor uh, Bowser and we spoke about the visions that each of us have for, uh, for our two cities. And while we will surely encounter bumps along the way through city diplomacy, I hope to shape Tokyo's knowledge with many, I, I hope to share Tokyo's knowledge with many countries and people, and together we will be well placed to overcome 
any obstacles. As a federal capital city and global superpower, I am very much looking forward to hearing more about the future plans for sustainability in Washington, D.C., and to working to tackle this global challenge together. Thank you very much indeed. Well, first of all, Sensei, uh, <laughs> Governor, um, I have to say, and I think the audience will agree, uh, the citizens of Tokyo are lucky to have a governor who can uh, convey such uh, enthusiasm and, and generate such excitement about Japan around the world in English and in French. Um, so uh, Tokyo's lucky. Thank uh, you very to much. Have you, Governor. <laughs> and we're lucky to have you speak today. Yeah. Um, I, um, I've, I've already decided what my card will say. Mm -hmm. It's going to say Mike and three-star Michelin restaurants. Mm -hmm. Um, mm -hmm. uh, and I uh, hope to beat all 13. Um, uh, yeah. And I hope someone else pays for it. But how, 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 many are, <laughs> how many are there in Washington, D.C.? I don't know. I do, know. I do know that the Monocle and the British magazines are unfair. I'm a native Washingtonian. <laughs> <laughs> They're not fair to Washington. The British have a bias. They burned this city. <laughs> um, and so I don't trust what they say about Washington, but they're right about, they're right about Tokyo. Yeah. I lived uh, in Tokyo two summers ago with my family, and it, was, it, was, it really was wonderful with, with children, <clears throat> safe, easy to travel, so many different things to do every day. But you don't notice Tokyo is changing very, very rapidly. I Each time you come to Tokyo, you cannot notice that. It, no, no, it's, rem it's remarkable yeah. um, uh, how, much, how much Tokyo is changing and how much dynamism there is. <clears throat> um, I wanted to ask one or two yes. questions before we open yes. up. Um, uh, one thing my wife and I noticed living in Tokyo two uh, years ago is how many more opportunities there are for women with, with, yes. with children, whether it's parks or mm. um, safe trains, yes. safe cars on the train, and so forth. <clears throat> um, but also there are still challenges. It's a, it's a big city. A lot of people live outside the city. So I wonder if you could um, say a little bit more about the topic you mentioned. You know, what, what is Tokyo doing as part of womenomics um, to, 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 to make it easier for women to have the right yeah. uh, opportunities and, uh, and life uh, work balance and for their families yes. and so on and so forth? <clears throat> yeah, just I'd like to first quote uh, some figures. Do you know uh, the percentage of female workers in my office, I mean in, in Tokyo Metropolitan Government? Uh, 30%, one out of three as women. So it is not so high as the United States of America. But uh, you know, also the high-ranking officials in my government, uh, the percentage still, is 16 percentage. So in Japan, it's relatively high. You know, the, I always say to my friend, Prime Minister Abe, please follow me, because your government, only 2 percent number of high-ranking officials. And even the private sectors, private companies, only 5%. So that, uh, you know, the, we are implementing many, many things. For example, uh, just to, t to, to take care of the kids, you know, we need a battery, the kindergarten, and, uh, you know, nursery, you know, systems, etc. We have the, really, the waiting list of the kids who want to enter. Uh, you know, my promise to the election is so we had at that time, last couple of years ago, eight children are waiting on the waiting list. Uh, so my promise is four years in my tenure from 8,000 to zero. But it's still very, very hard. I'm doing very, very hard. So that, for example, we have a kindergarten uh, in our city hall building uh, in this October. And we open this uh, facilities to the people, not only to our employees, but also to the people working near Shinjuku. So anyway, uh, I'd like to say many, many things. But uh, uh, you know, the, uh, there are some other kind of policies. We just published a white paper on women in Tokyo. This is the first challenge. N no other local community had done that, no national uh, you know, the, uh, uh, government 
And the, we analyzed all the situation that uh, Tokyo women are facing with. Uh, for example, uh, it takes too long time to commute. Normally, average time is one hour and 10, 70 minutes. Uh, maybe in Washington, 20 minutes or something like that. Or in New York, 45 minutes. In Paris, 30 minutes. So this, uh, you know, the, the commuting time is one of the big obstacles for women to get to work because they have to take care of, of you know, the families and et cetera. So the, uh, what to, we are planning is, uh, you know, the provide more housing facilities in the center so they can move to. Uh, I think the Washington DC and New York are doing the same kind of things. And, but also we need the, you know, the, especially the efforts to Japanese men. There are many Japanese men here also, but they don't share the, uh, you know, the, the works in the, in the household, and they don't take care of the, the kids. That is a problem. So the, what I'm doing is to educate Japanese men to share all the tasks with their spouses. So this is one thing. And, but anyway, uh, it takes time. But at least what I'm saying is at uh, 5 o'clock in the evening, I say to everybody, go back to home. Don't work anymore. And on weekends, don't work and stay at home. And besides, I'm proposing three days off per week, not just two days, you know, the, that's good. Like that, you know, the, you can take care of your kids and the, but very important thing is efficiency of working, working efficiency, quality. You know, even if you rest 10 hours uh, at your office, you, if you don't pre produce anything, that's ridiculous. So I say, you know, in spite of staying 10 hours, just stay seven hours and achieve what I need. So the, this kind of uh, efficiency is most needed in our society. So the, we have to run many, many more things from the states. But for the moment, uh, if you allow me, like Asama and Nama TV, I will speak, you know, uh, many, many hours, so I stop now. No, no, it's a, <laughs> it's a professor's disease. <laughs> yes. <laughs> um, one brief question, then I want to yes. call on the audience. You've probably heard of this phrase economists uh, yes. uh, call uh, Olympics hangover. Yes. That very frequently, you know, countries will, or cities will host Olympics, they'll have a, a growth and then off the, yeah. off the cliff after yeah. the tourism ends. Japan has, uh, and Tokyo in particular, has enormous untapped potential in tourism and so forth. But what, what's the cure for the Olympics hangover? You mentioned some interesting things about util utilization of the facilities, but what other kinds of, uh, uh, of cures do you, you have? You know, Mike, I assure you that even after 2020 games, Tokyo will never become the ghost town, <laughs> right? <laughs> and the more prosperous, uh, richer than now. And I calculated everything. I don't know if uh, I'll be re-elected re or not, but uh, you know, the, for example, we have the plan to connect Tokyo station, railway station, central station, to the Narita airport. You know, with this line, it takes only 17 minutes from uh, airport to station. But this I will not implement immediately. Mm. Let's wait for. So after 2020, there are many, many projects to improve infrastructure, so public works. So even if private sectors are not active after 2020, the government will prepare everything in order that Tokyo would not become the ghost town. So the London is the uh, best example for us. After 2012, games. London is still going up and up. And according to the one of the Tokyo Institute uh, analysis, the ranking of the cities, big cities, uh, number one city is London. Number two is New York. Number three is Paris. 
and we are number four. And Singapore is catching up with. And number six is Seoul. So the, uh, again, my promise to, uh, to the voters is in 2020, we'll become the number one city. Okay, excellent. Um, <laughs> the floor is open. Please raise your hand and try to keep it, uh, try to keep it brief. And yes, ma'am. Economy, uh, please, uh, with et, et cetera. Yeah. Um, but I'm, I'm, I'd love to hear more about your uh, some more details about sustainability and, and renewables and what your initiatives have been on that. Yeah, not not only environmental issues, but but all, yes. all fields. You know, you know the. Uh, uh, let me answer in this way. You know the uh, what uh, all the time have achieved. Yeah. I'm very proud of the fact that Tokyo is becoming the, the first big city of the world where there will be no traffic jam at all. Please come to Tokyo, you know. Uh, <laughs> because, you know, the last year we have completed Ring Expressway. Uh, there are three Ring Expressway. Of course, you have to pay uh, center, middle, and outer. We finished center last year. And it's very <coughs> effective because before it took 40 minutes from airport to Shinjuku uh, to come, to, right? Now it's half, 20 minutes. You know, uh, just let me quote another precise figure. The number of cars getting into the center is, was reduced just by 5%, but rate of congestion, traffic jam, is reduced by 50%. So what I'm planning to is by the year 2020, we'll complete another three, <coughs> another two, I mean, the uh, uh, Ring Expressway. And at that time, today we have six million cars get into the Tokyo, downtown Tokyo. So the, with these three ringways, number of cars coming into the center of Tokyo is reduced by half. So that almost zero, I mean, uh, congestion rate. So that, you know, the, this, is, this becomes really, this makes Tokyo a sustainable city. You know, the no gas emissions at all, and the, you know, you can have enough time to move around the Tokyo. So this is one thing, and the, also the, we will increase the number of hydrogen uh, power the cars and the hydrogen stations. And uh, for example, uh, we have the athlete village for the games of 2020. And after the games, I will transform this village into a new town called Hydrogen New Town. And you have, you have no right to enter without this new car. And the, all the you know, energy supply will be made by the Hydrogen Society. So the, these kind of efforts will be uh, you know, the gathered into to make our uh, city more sustainable. Okay? Thank you. Yes, sir. And could you please identify yourself? Yes. Okay. Uh, thank you for your speech. My name, my name is Taishu Yamakawa. Um, my question is on uh, cybersecurity, and uh, you, you mentioned about cybersecurity. Uh, how, how well do you think uh, Japan and Tokyo is prepared for future th cyber threats, and uh, what kind of uh, steps do you think should be yeah, taken? Yeah. You know, the, uh, we are uh, every second watching from where come this kind of cyber securities, massively from China, for example, and from the States also. And the, uh, not only our team, but also the uh, national team. That means defense ministry and the foreign ministry and the police department. We are working together in order to survey and we are tra training special teams to prevent uh, a kind of cyber security. So the, uh, always we have to make many, many tremendous kinds of efforts but uh, we will do, and we will protect our city with this kind of cyber security. Okay? Yes, ma'am. 
Madame. Hi, uh, Sandra Baer with Personal Cities. I've been reading about the reinvention, the rebranding that you talked about in Tokyo. Um, uh, I'm so curious, you know, so many cities should be doing that, sort of thinking about what their true character is and what their assets are. And I, I'm curious as to what you did, what was the process that you went through to sort of come up with that idea and um, how to sort of reinvent Tokyo to the world? I can't see it's clear. Yeah. What was the, the process? To, to come up with a new brand and this for Tokyo. This yes, way. everything. Tokyo's image and brand. You know, the uh, first idea of mine is to make maximum use of uh, emblem of Tokyo Olympic Games. But uh, we failed, as you know. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> why? And so the, I had to give up this idea. So that's a which kind, and especially uh, emblem of games, you should pay the credit to IOC. Tremendous amount of money, right? So I thought about something free. So I said, you don't pay. You don't need to pay me with this end mark. So this is one thing. And the, for example, uh, on my return back to Tokyo next week, uh, I will inaugurate new products of Kirin beer. Kirin beer will make special beer, and uh, or this bottle, they put Kirin and Tokyo. And the, another company, you know the, the drinks, so-called Pokari Sweat. <laughs> yes. They will do the Pokari Sweat and Tokyo. And for example, the athlete cannot drink the beer during the, the games. But uh, Pokari Sweat, it's good. So that uh, I asked them, well, you can use freely this brand mark, but please donate, for example, 100 bottles of Pokari Sweat to the athlete. And they drink, and they can win the gold medal. And they, <laughs> that's a, it's a very good commercial. So that this kind of uh, you know, the good uh, circulation, uh, you know, the circle will be uh, what uh, I aim at. So if you have an idea, if, if you can uh, buy something with this mark, uh, I can authorize it immediately. Thank you. I survived at, at Tokyo University on Pokari Sweat and Kirin Beer. <laughs> okay. So in the, way in the back there. Thank you, Governor, for your presentation. Um, there are two things that I care about most when looking at a city. The first is land, the ease in which I can buy property or real estate. And the second is health care. Just a minute. You said first land? First land. Land price, ne? The ease of a foreigner, for example, to purchase land in the ah. city. And the second is health care. Yes. Um, on the first part, if you could talk a little bit about Tokyo's attractiveness as a city for foreigners uh -huh. to purchase land or real estate there as an investment or to live. And the second is with Japan's aging population, yes. there's a greater need and demand for healthcare workers who can support Japan's senior yeah, citizens sure. and yeah. elders. And I'm wondering if you can touch upon uh, foreign labor. Yes. What sort of um, thoughts you have in welcoming foreign labor, specifically in sectors that maybe Tokyo could really benefit from in healthcare, so that those two attractive qualities, the ease of purchasing land and uh, having your healthcare needs met, could be uh, further promoting Tokyo as an attractive city for foreigners. Thank you. Well, thank you very, very much for your good questions. Uh, I'd like to answer the last part of your questions. Uh, of course, we badly need the uh, workers uh, who can't take care of the aged persons. But, uh, you know, the, uh, that relates to your first question. Before asking to the foreign workers, we have Japanese women who can work, but who don't work. And we have the aged persons uh, more than 65 years. I'm 67 years old now, but I'm active, right? And uh, all my schoolmates, 
they are active when I just get pensions, but uh, I say to them, why don't you work? Please come to work together. And so the, I'd like to first ask to, you know, Japanese women, Japanese eight person to participate in the, uh, the market of labor forces. But, uh, you know, the Tokyo, Tokyo's economy is growing up so that uh, you can have various kinds of job chances and they don't like to get into these uh, healthcare businesses as simple you know, work horses. So that now we have the trainees coming from Vietnam, from Indonesia, and uh, for them, language is one of the biggest barrier. But we teach Japanese, and even if they can't read precisely kanji or you know, difficult words, well, it's okay if they have the uh, skills to, to, to take care of uh, uh, aged persons, Alzheimer's persons, you know. The, so the massively they are coming. So this is one thing. And uh, to part this, uh, purchase real estate or uh, land, uh, you know, the, even for Japanese people, it's very, very difficult, because it's too expensive, even for me, you know. But uh, there is no restrictions for, you know, foreign uh, companies or foreigners to buy land in Tokyo. So the, uh, I should say we have uh, uh, 80, let me see, 800,000 vacant houses. Yeah, so you can come to, uh, you know, buy these houses. You can transform these houses to A, B, and B. Now it's okay, you can do that. And we partly need the rooms and the hotels, and uh, I, I'm building the hotels, but uh, so please come to buy. Uh, I invite you to buy. And the, and others, uh, may I, did I ask your questions? Okay, thank you. Excellent, last question for the audience. That's the question. Before though. we go. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, for the audience, this question is for you. Who is planning on going to the 2020 Olympics? Oh, thank you very much. Yeah. Yeah. None of the Japanese staff or visitors <laughs> answered yes. So are you all going to flee Tokyo? Is that the <laughs> Yeah. Um, it, it'll be very exciting. Yes. And uh, this has been very enjoyable, and uh, we really appreciate you stopping here. And I understand tomorrow at the um, Sakura Matsuri, there's going to be a Tokyo yes. booth um, for anyone who's going to the festival and wants to just learn more about uh, Tokyo and buying houses and land and, <laughs> and uh, tourism. Um, uh, but let me first um, uh, conclude and, uh, and please join me in thanking uh, Governor Sensei uh, uh, Masazoe-san. Thank you. Thank you very much indeed.